da 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 Welcome to uh, the bonus episode of Staying Relevant, but I can't just start that way because we are in our new abode. We're in the, as Pete calls it, what? The Airbnb? Yeah, it's it's sort of like a holiday home, but we'll be here for a while because we are moving to a bigger, better place. So for now, this is this is just make do. Um, it doesn't even say Staying Relevant. <laughs> we were going to make a sign um, with felt tips. But then I couldn't be bothered. So we haven't done that, but we have got pictures and we have got sofas. But that's where we are at the moment. We, uh, we're, we... And let me tell you about the new studio. It's like fucking Fort Knox to get in and out. Yeah, it's it really is. It's a fucking nightmare. There's security everywhere. There's fucking doors everywhere. There's glass shit. I just walked into the glass barrier downstairs because I didn't realise it was open because I don't feel great today. Yeah, like Sam said, welcome to Stay Relevant. This is going to be a bonus special that is different because it's not really a bonus special. It's sort of a main episode, but we put it as the bonus episode. It's very complicated, but this will be out tomorrow, which is Thursday, um, because we couldn't wait to tell you all about the Brits. I will be swearing if you don't like that won't be drinking because I'm not very well I never normally drink but I might have a beer just so I can throw it in Pete's face and be like look at me having a bevy so this is the bonus episode in our new abode in our Airbnb and I actually think it's really cool that we got frames from our old gaff well they didn't even frame mine that was already framed <laughs> um, mine's framed still got the, the, the price on it which we still haven't taken off so everyone knows that I'm cheap <laughs> £2.99 um, I is, think which is lovely but yours has been framed lovely <laughs> and they're just hanging by wires they are I think it's quite cool do you? yeah yeah and um, actually, we probably should put the piece of cardboard at the back that's staying relevant on it. Yeah, so people I know where they are. Maybe we'll work on that. Oh, I tell you what, how about, in fact, I've just got a lovely bit of interaction that you all like. If you make us a sign, we'll put it up. Yeah, that's a great idea. Send it to Charlotte's home address, Big Chaz's home address, which is. Yeah, no, but we'll get them to digitally, or oh, do you mean actually physically make it? Yeah, physically make it. Get the felt tips out, a bit of glitter and all that sort of stuff. Arts and crafts for the Staying Relevant listeners. Um, it, like Sort of like a here's one I made earlier type of shit. So before sending it, um, DM us a photo and then we'll tell you if it's good enough. <laughs> and, and if it's shit, don't bother posting. Uh, but if it's good, we'll display it. We'll display your artwork. <laughs> Let me tell you some more about this new studio, which is very state-of-the-art beautiful. There's people upstairs having picnics and stuff. Really nice. Opposite our studio, and I don't know if they put that in specifically for Sam, there's a wellness room. Now, I asked what's in the wellness Shut room. Up. It's actually titled The Wellness Room. And apparently, it's just a place to go if you're having a moment. <laughs> so, I don't know if they put that in there specifically <laughs> no for Sam. Way. Opposite our studio. Um, but yes, there's a wellness room. That's how fabulous. There's balconies, there's a cafe, there's a kitchen there's all sorts of stuff so very nice very posh play-doh yeah yeah it's very nice make sure you rate review do all that sort of stuff follow us on instagram tiktok snapchat and youtube um <laughs> at staying relevant podcast so this episode is normally all about you which is a bonus episode however we have had enough of you it's about so us we, so we've made it all about us and the brits um because what a night that was i think you say a nightmare pete didn't have the best of times no, Pete did not. And I'm sure you're very surprised to hear that because you must have thought Pete's going to have a wonderful night. Um, anyway, should we start with the getting ready? Sam and I arrived at a hotel together yep. uh, to get ready. Three hours earlier than we needed to be there. Um, oh, we're going in hard. <laughs> so, so, so what we did um, was we sat on the bed in dressing gowns, ordered some room service and watched the athletics <laughs> for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Not even joking you. Everyone else is prepped when you look at all their stories. Instagram ready, the glam yeah. squad are there, everyone's getting ready for it. So good. So we discussed what the difference between heptathlon and decathlon was. <laughs> we did! Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be one of the most exciting nights of the year for everyone who's like who wants to go to the Brits. We turn up, we've got a shared room. <laughs> We're both in dressing gowns watching the long jump. And yeah. Pete, Pete goes, you ever see that guy? <laughs> Pete's going, you ever see that guy? He's the he's not very good at long jumps, but he's the best at heptathlons, which this long jump is in. It's his worst, <laughs> it was his worst event as part of the heptathlon. <laughs> but he was the world champion, but actually it's his it's his least, you know, favourite event. Then someone if, came you'd in. Have, if you'd have seen him in some of the other events, he's fabulous. Someone came in with room service and we just sat there in dressing gowns. Long she jump. came in with Pete's penny penny 
Biata and Ara Biata. She yeah. came with Pete's Penny Biata. Um, <laughs> it's a new, it's a new thing that they're only doing this hotel specifically. She came in with his Ara Biata and went oh. Ara Biata, mate. She went, oh my god, it's Pete Wicks. He's lying there with his dressing gown on. Um, it's so good. And then yeah. he went gone. They will have a photo, love. Well, yeah. Well, she because uh, her daughter. It was her daughter. Yeah, it was yeah, really it was sweet. Daughter. But she was lovely. Really lovely. The food was lovely. Um, so funny though. But, and then over then you thought you'd eaten too much. Then I, yeah, I I didn't think that the best thing for me to be eating, but I thought I'd better lie my stomach a little bit because I hadn't eaten since Tuesday, um, and I thought maybe I should I should lie my stomach. So I had a big bowl of pasta. I then started thinking, well, oh, that was a bad idea because it really sat quite heavy on me. You got you got a bit tired. You got, got a little bit tired. <laughs> and I did get a little bit tired. So 15 minutes before we were due to be picked up, um, we jumped to action and got ready. Um, <laughs> Sam um, uh, Sam had forgotten his hair wax. Um, Sam had actually turned up at the hotel with no bag. He literally <laughs> was just holding all his bits of clothes in his hands. Oh, you haven't brought it in like you said you would, actually. No, I completely... It's because I'm washing it for you. Shut up. Well, when I say I'm washing it for you, uh, I've sent it with all my washing to my mum's. Oh, um, my God. So Tracy is currently washing your pants. Oh, my God, that's so sweet. So I basically... I, I turned up, as Pete said, because Pete was like, look, mate, you're not going to stay in this hotel room because I refuse to share a bedroom with you. You're going to actually go home. I'm going to stay in the hotel room. And so he goes, anything you turn up in, I'll just bring to the podcast. He's having it washed. I think that's a fairly normal response, isn't it? Oh, it's just incredibly kind. Do you not go and wash your friend's clothes if they left? I can imagine room? Pete just going around the hotel room the next day being like, right, that's Sam's trackies. I might put them in there. Yeah, I literally had to put it out. Even your fucking dirty socks. But we'll get onto the sock. <laughs> yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that wasn't great. But um, you're so right. I did forget my hair gel. So so that was that. So then I tried to do Sam's hair, but I don't obviously have hair gel. Give me powder. Um, I have this volume powder sometimes that, that kind of uh, occasionally, um, depending on some lights, hides my receding hairline. Um, so I gave Sam some of that, but it didn't make much difference because Sam's hair is like straw. Yeah, it doesn't so work. it actually looked worse. But anyway, we got ready. It did look worse, didn't it? Oh, it looked terrible. I don't yeah. know why that is. I literally poured all of his hair powder onto my scalp yeah. and it did nothing. No, it didn't. And then, so then I'd painted in the back of his head with the Arabiata sauce just to make sure we covered the shine from the bald patch. Um, <laughs> then we went downstairs for a little drink in the bar, didn't we? We did indeed, yeah. Um, got ourselves ready. Got a lovely picture of Sam and I um, in our outfits. Now, a lot of people pointed out on that picture, um, Sam's matching pocket square. There was a reason for that, as you later found out if you watched any of the Brits content, that Sam forgot his, his little pocket square, um, so had stuffed a dirty sock into his uh, jacket, which I wasn't happy about because I didn't think that was red carpet appropriate. So I gave him my neck neckerchief. Yeah, the um, neckerchief. <laughs> which I was going to wear um, so that he could he could put that in there. So it wasn't intentionally matching, but in the end, a lot of you liked it. So Yeah, uh, and loads of people picked up on it on the red carpet as well. Loads they, of people were like, oh my God, you're matching. I was like, yes, we are. Yeah, yeah, with a kind of a chevron pattern jacket that I had and the, and the zigzag. Well, yeah, I think we should probably go over what Pete was wearing very quickly. You know, he's talking about my sock, which by the way, actually, um, we had an official red carpet photo and not one person picked up on it. That's how well it Well, I'll tell you why not one person picked up on it, because the official red carpet photo you put on your Instagram, um, there were other things that were, were wrong <laughs> with that photo, um, as opposed to the sock. So no one noticed your sock, because you had yet again made me, with a nose the size of a fucking walrus, uh, done my hair the lot. So thanks again for that. Um, really appreciate that. And I really appreciate the... Over a hundred thousand people that liked it and think it's hilarious. You're did all... really well. So anyway, uh, but at least they're starting to notice that you're doing that, which yeah. is which is good. Uh, apart from the one or two people saying, "Have you had a rough night?" Which he had. Um, not as rough as yours from what I hear, but we'll get onto that. Very good point. We'll get onto that. So anyway, um, you would know if you were there. Um, no, but but my social battery had run out. So anyway, the arrival. Now <laughs> the arrival. Oh, even the arrival's great. From the actually. hotel. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, location-wise, not ideal. Yeah. Hotel, West London, Brits, Greenwich. Greenwich. <laughs> Hour. And the pasta at this point is really sitting. <laughs> but not just the pasta, but I thought I'd try and liven myself up uh, in the bar before we left in the hotel. So I downed two beers and a vodka um, and then <laughs> forgot that I had to sit in a the car for an stew. hour with a full bowl of penny, uh, what did you call it? Penibiata. Uh, with a penibiata. 
uh, and a couple of beers in my stomach. <laughs> so that wasn't a fun ride. Pete, Pete started getting ever so slightly cranky on the way there. And so you can only imagine, because we haven't even started what we're meant to be doing, which we're going to cover in a second. But I just want to get this out there. Pete is has tried already to sort of like nail down the problems that are going to be happening when we <coughs> arrive. Because at the NTAs, Pete got given a cameraman pass and didn't get let in to like three different places because he, was, he wasn't on the list. I sat on the curb. So we, we, Pete was trying to negate the possibility of that happening at the Prince. So he's on the phone to our producer. I would just like to point out that I had said multiple times <laughs> during the week, Let's not have another NTAs moment. <laughs> yeah. Let's not have an, another NTAs moment. Let's make this go smooth, yeah, yeah, yeah. shall we? So we're sat, we're sat in the car. First of all, to get your Brits ticket, you need to download the O2 app because it's at the O2 <laughs> Arena. That in itself was a nightmare for Pete. That was 25 <laughs> minutes of um, unparalleled anger. Yeah. In and the, the poor lady at the front of the car the who was driving with us to the O2 was like, I don't, I, I don't know how else to say it. Just download the app. Just download. People's like, but I don't know how to download the app. So that was that was the I could see the anger. But I managed frothing. to download the app, and then the struggle I had was transferring the ticket from hers to my app. That was a problem as well, and that wasn't working because we were going through a number of tunnels, um, and, and all of that was a big problem for me. Anyway, that happened, and I thought, right, well, that must be the one problem done. Um, we can't have any more, <laughs> surely. <laughs> so I let wonderful Chaz know, who looks after us, that we were minutes away um, for her to come and meet us. So she did come and meet us. No, but not um, even that. No, 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 you no, let, no. let her off. No, no, no. She did come and meet us. It just didn't. It just wasn't where we were that she came and made, uh, met us because the car had taken us to a different red carpet entrance, which was the exact, exact problem that we had at the NTAs <laughs> and the exact problem that I wanted to avoid. So at this point, Sam pulls out his phone <laughs> whilst I try and fix the problem by speaking to Chaz. So good. Some of you may have seen. It's such good footage. Some of the stories. It's Pete literally getting more and more irate because you've got the guy in the higher vids being like, sorry, mate, can't come in here. And Pete's on the phone to Charlie Chan's being like, but he's not letting it see. And I'm just laughing, filming the whole thing, so not helping at all. Then another guy in the high vis comes around the other side of the car. So you've got both of them, pincer moving into the car window. He's being like, sorry, lads, you've got to move on. Pete's going, but I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> Um, but Charlotte's directional skills were great. Look for the big gate, um, which was really helpful for me. So um, I, we just wandered around looking for a big gate. Eventually, someone told us where to go. Uh, it was a little bit of a way away from where, where we were. So I then gave Charlotte a rundown of, of, of uh, our trip there at every zebra crossing where we stopped and, and everything else until we got there. That was great. Then we get in. Everything's fine. Happy great. days. Two sex. Uh, <laughs> two, just two seconds. Oh, yeah, just to point out as well, um, as a lot of you know, Sam's favourite thing to do is just to make me look awful. Um, not just in pictures, but just generally in life. Um, so obviously, the only Brits press stuff that I have is the fact that I didn't get in and a picture of me looking fucking awful on Sam's Instagram. <laughs> Uh, because I wasn't allowed to do my own press pictures. I had to do it with him and Zara because they pre-planned changing my picture and I didn't click onto it. Um, I didn't click onto it. So Pete's only press is the red carpet with me and Zara we changed his nose and the fact that, that mate, so this is the mirror. I did, however, feature on a blog for Best Dressed. Fair play, because the flares look great. Uh, the Mirror. Sam Thompson and Pete Wicks panic as they can't get into Brit Awards despite working on the red carpet. <laughs> it made the press. Just about sums that up. Uh, this is before we've fucking done anything. I foresee these problems in everything that I do. Um, and no one listens to me. It's like a premonition that everything's going to be fucked. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, but no one else got fucked. It was but, only us. But, but yeah, no, but no one else seems to have that problem. Um... <laughs> Anyway, so so we get to the red carpet. Oh. It's very, very busy. Um, and we are uh, kind of first in line of, of, of people to interview everyone. Um, and I'll tell you why that is. It's because we demanded it. So there we go. And listen, the, the main reason for that <laughs> is that, um, uh, as we all know, I like a little bit of uh, logic and, and I like structure. And the red carpet is not structured uh, at all. It's a fucking free-for-all. It's free-for-all. Um, but it's a free-for-all of grabbing people who I have no idea who they are. <laughs> this was a, a really awesome part of the night, by but the way. But again, I was promised fact sheets. 
<laughs> now, Chaz did a wonderful job for the first hour of fact sheets, but then we got very busy, didn't we, Chaz? So the fact sheets went out the fucking window <laughs> and it was just blag this. So I was interviewing people, not knowing if they were a singer, a fucking TikToker, a YouTuber, a what's the fit traitor? Didn't know who. Traitor! <laughs> Didn't know. Pete's right. Basically, the demand was we were first on the carpet. So we at least got to be like the first ones to interview people. You don't want to be wet miles at the back because they're bored by that point. They don't really want to be interviewed by you. So we were behind the official Brits who we're, we're gunning for their job actually next year. Uh, the official Brits red carpet host. We were next to them. But the problem is... It doesn't really matter because you're so close to each accreditation. I kept on getting pushed in the back. And they were like, move on, you're in our shot. And I was like, well, I don't know what to do. And you're like wrestling with these other accreditations. We're like, this is so weird. We're like, press again. Because <laughs> um, Sam told me we had our own cubicle. It was a little bit like the NCAs when I was told that I wasn't just a cameraman <laughs> and that I was hosting the official NCAs. I was promised an awful lot of things that weren't there. Uh, um, anyway, so let's get on to, to some highlights from actually... What are your highlights from that red carpet? Uh, uh, on a serious note, there were some actually really cool people there. Uh, Carly Minogue was, was fucking delightful. Um, Dua Lipa. Uh, Dua Lipa was wonderful and also very beautiful. No, there were some actually really nice people. I just didn't understand who some of these people were. Um, there was a moment. But that's on me, not on them, because they're fabulous. I there was a moment. Music. By the end of the evening, and then I, I'm just, it's the last thing I'm going to say on the matter on my side, but by the end of the evening, Pete was beckoning people through. You know, you know when you're like, you've broken down, <laughs> you've broken down the motorway, and you have to be like, no, no, I'm crashed. Come through, come through. But then we heard that Kylie was coming. Whilst we're on the point, of, of perhaps uh, the red carpet not being a safe space for me. Um, Sam, should we move on to you, shall oh, we? Oh, but it's so funny. Zara came down the red carpet. Sam Jeez. screamed over everyone else's interview. Bear in mind, you're all quite close together. He did this quite a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah, people got Sam, really angry. Sam, Sam put himself in other people's interviews. He'd listen to other people's and then shout answers <laughs> behind them. Um, uh, no idea why. Um, but when he saw Zara, he screamed, Goose! There's a goose. Everyone, and when I say screamed, I mean screamed. Yeah. And at this point, it was quite early in the night, so there wasn't as big a buzz as there was. So everyone then looked down from the red carpet expecting to see a goose. <laughs> but what they saw was Sam and Zara nose bop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we then found out some more interesting things about Sam and his uh, insteps to to make him a little bit taller. Now I bought them thinking they'd be they would work and they we've, don't work. We've done that already. But we've spoken about that, and yeah. evidently they don't work. Um, next up was uh, Sam played red carpet hero at one point. Ever the gentleman, uh, someone dropped their bag. Um, Sam, despite the fact that they were mid interview, decided to push someone out of the way run over and pick up the contents of the bag whilst they were still interviewing, had microphones, and hand her back her bag with the contents, including a tampon. Literally held up and went, do you want this as well? <laughs> while she's got a microphone and being recorded. So, uh... Yeah, but also, like... Oh, I'm not finished with some of your exploits on the red carpet, <laughs> Mate, Samuel. Yeah, but also, I came back, I think I'd done a good deal, and people went, what the fuck have you just done? I went, oh, I'll go back a tampon. Because she dropped her, she was in an interview, and I was like, I'll get it, don't worry, because we've, we, we're so busy funneling people through, we have time to spare. So I was like, all right, I'll pick up all your contents. And then you know when you look at something on the floor and you go, oh shit, that's a tampon. And you're like, well, I can't leave it there, because I've got to pick it up. So I was like, here you go, I think this is yours. But I, th I think the point of that was, it was a very nice deed you were doing, but you didn't need to hand it to her in her face during the interview. <laughs> Do you want this as well? <laughs> Midwives, she's going, I'm oh, having such a lovely night, such an honour to be here. Wonderful. And then I came back to Pete, and Pete literally went, what have you done? <laughs> I don't understand what the problem is. It was a gallant decision. Um, we also had uh, Sam's next moment, and, and if you've seen the content, there is a lot of content based around Sam's sock. Um, it got an awful lot of um, comments, and a lot of people were discussing the sock, weren't they, Sam? Yeah. Um, a few people, you know, it's, it's hearsay, but a few people mentioned a smell. Um, no. It's however, the, the biggest moment for the sock was when Sam um, uh, swung it around his head. That was a moment I don't think anyone was expecting. <laughs> now, on the Dua Lipa interview, let me tell you, we were specifically told by her PR and everyone else to ask two questions of which they had to be professional. <laughs> we did not do that. 
Um, we were told not to do that. Uh, however, she seemed to have a lovely time with us. She did. She really enjoyed herself. Think. Despite the sock gate, I think she had a lovely time. This was another moment. Sam, very enthusiastic. And Sam is a really nice person. He likes to compliment people and it's, it, that's always great. But in, in, in a kind of busy scenario like that, there was a lot of things flying about. Um, Sam, as a group of women, four girls walked past, must have been in some sort of bands that, um, that someone had heard of, shouted... Oh my God, I love your fits. But it did sound like tits. I'll be honest with you, to everyone concerned, it sounded like Sam had just shouted, I love your tits Beat to, so to a girl band. I then had to drag him over um, and give him a little talk. Um, Peter went, what the fuck did you just say? I went, what? I love your fits. That, yeah, and as you can imagine, in that kind of loud scenario, they were ushered along very, very quickly. Another one of my favourite Sam moments from the event. Okay, oh. oh, there's an absolute... Honestly, you were on form. Was the moment that someone one else came over and, 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 you know, complimented Sam, much like he did the other week with Austin Butler and um, uh, Timothy Thanks Shallow. bringing that up again. Whatever. Um, uh, he, he, he actually, they said, I love your glasses to Sam. So Sam went... Oh, no, I know what you're about to say. So Sam went to this lovely girl, genuinely, really, really lovely. Her name escapes me. No, it was Pink Pantherus. Pink Pantherus. Yes. To um, that well-known thief, Pink Panther. Um, <laughs> Sam, Sam said, well, you can have them. And she went, really? And he went, yeah, yeah, you can have them. And she was absolutely lovely. She was genuinely quite excited about the fact, because I think she was a big King of the Jungle fan. Um, so she was quite excited about the fact that she'd got Sam's glasses. What then happened, five minutes later, was her manager walked back down to Sam and went, can she really have them? Um, because she'd been so polite, she thought he might have meant it as a joke, but he was like, can she really have them? Sam went, no. <laughs> and took back the glasses that he'd handed her on camera. So all of this, oh, let me pick up your tampon and I'm such a fucking hero, only if there's a camera there, because what a nasty piece of work he is. And actually, I've heard now through the grapevine, he actually asked Austin Butler and Timothy Chatelain for theirs back as well. Um, <laughs> Do you know what, girl? I actually just, you've actually just made me realise something. I thought he was her mate. No, so I thought she, oh shit, I thought she had, if she wanted to wear them, she could have had them. So I gave her my, my tinted glasses, being like, yeah, she was like, they're really cool. I was like, well, you can have them. She went, really? I was like, yeah, of course you can. But then she gave them some dude. And I was like, oh, that's just one of her, like, posse. And this guy came around and went, hey man, like, is it okay if we have these? And I went, no. <laughs> I don't know who you are. I was like, I'm not giving away my eyewear for the night to some random bloke if she wants to wear it. But I didn't realise he was probably the manager. Yeah. Um, and That's I think, just rude, I think really, she was it? just trying to be polite. Oh, no. Um, and you, you took them back. Um, because, you know, it's not like you own the company and have uh, hundreds of pairs at home yourself. And she's got five million followers, so it would have been really, Jeez. really good... <laughs> Um, uh, like content for you, marketing would have been really, really good, but um, no, you're stingy. So took them back. Um, anyway, so we're moving on. The probably all, all sorts of other crap happened. You've seen some of the clips, blah 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 blah. Uh, however, I think probably the biggest night for you, Samuel, is is not because um, everyone was very excited about the King of the Jungle being there. Let me just say that. Uh, no, they weren't. No one even said a word. That's also true. But <laughs> a lot of people were excited about the King of Jungle, but no one was more excited to see Sam than Kylie Minogue, who she remembered was. him from a previous interview. That's actually quite big. I can't even take the piss out of that. Um, and then you ruined it by calling her a hot second. No, 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 no. I don't think I ruined it with that. I think that she understood what I meant by calling her a hot second. Because she went, it doesn't just take a hot second to make this look so good. And I went, you look like a hot second. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, what you meant by that is you just, you, you look hot. Yeah, I mean, you look great. Yeah, no, she did look great. She looked fabulous. And that was it. Done. Job done. Romeo done. Um, so, yeah, so that, well, that, was, that was kind of the red carpet. Uh, one other thing about the, the carpet, actually, is I was forced into um, standing there while Sam spoke to uh, a load of people from... Traitors. Traitors. Yeah. Um, uh, one of which got quite angry with me, actually, because I hadn't watched Traitors, because Sam told her that I hadn't watched it. Diane, but Rasses. Yeah, she got quite ang she got quite angry with me. She was like, well, you need to watch it then. You need to watch she's, it. Uh, she's an um, icon. Yeah, she, I mean, well, I'm sure she is, but, I, you know, I, I, Sam had literally said, Pete doesn't watch it, so you won't know what's happening. And I said, no, genuinely, I'm sorry, so I, I, I don't know what's happening. And she went, well, you need to watch it then, as if I'd done something wrong. But you just don't 
don't get her. You don't get her, man. She's Diane. I couldn't give a fuck who she is. Mate, mate, one of my favorite things is she was with her son, Ross. And uh, Ross is very Pete. So Diane's a bit more me. And Ross is basically, I looked at Ross, that's quite the phrase, and walked in and went, but Ross is, and he went, haven't heard that a million times, completely deadpan, and just went, oh, God. And then, by the, then Pete went, oh, I haven't watched it. And he goes, thank God. God for that. And he literally went, Thank He was you. quite happy. Yeah. He was so jokes. He literally couldn't have given less of a shit. He was so over it by this point. And then producer Charlotte went, Hey, um, Ross, do you mind just doing a little wink down the camera uh, for us? Like your traitor's wink. And he went, Fucking hell. <laughs> and went, uh, and winked down the camera. And he was just, he was absolutely brilliant. He was you. I tell you what I did like though was the. Charlie XCX is good. Molly, Molly she, seemed, she seemed really nice. But the guy, is it the guy that won? Harry, guy who won it, yeah. He was actually a really, really lovely guy. I quite liked him. Yeah, he was nice. But yeah, I, I don't I don't keep down with the kids. I think we were their favourite interviews though. I think we absolutely smashed it. Well, yeah, we didn't ask a lot of. Well, we didn't really ask anything, if I'm honest with you. I don't really know what we. Well, I don't really know what we did. It was all kind of a blur. Um, uh, and I think I'd gone delirious at that point. But on the plus side, I then had to go and finish the ceremony, at which point my social battery, as Sam said, was done. Over. Do you know what I love, though? At the very start of this night, people went, the problem I have is I'm really worried that I'm going to have the same night I had at the NTAs, where by the time I finish this work stuff, when I get to the bar, which is my safe place, I'm not going to want to talk to anyone. He was like, and it ruined my night then, and I'm worried it's going to ruin my night tonight. And boy, did it ruin his night tonight. To be honest, that's only just part one. That is part one of this bonus episode. There's so much to talk about. We've got after parties coming up. And if you enjoyed that, let me tell you, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> it really <laughs> doesn't. It gets worse. Uh, there's police escorts. Um, there are, uh, there's Sam being drunk. Sam being a man of the people. Uh, Sam swinging ties, not just socks in people's faces. Um, and Tube rides. Tube rides, me disappearing. And um, the infamous photo edit. Thank you so much for listening to this bonus episode of Staying Relevant, hosted by two best friends, Pete Wicks and Sam Thompson. And uh, it's been a real fun one. I've really enjoyed this one, I've got to say. Please like, comment, and subscribe. But do leave reviews. I read every single one, good and bad, although the bad ones I always call Pete up afterwards and go, oh, that sucked. Um, I haven't read any recently. Have we had any interesting ones? Okay. Yeah, we like the reviews. Do that. It's nice to read them. Um, also, follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, and YouTube at Staying Relevant Podcasts. Um, yeah, part two coming soon. Ta da, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs>